Hello and welcome to this discussion of the first practicum activity of this term. This one's an overview of the lamplighter data file. Um, notice that the lamplighter data file is given to you. It's in the content section. It asks you to do a few things, or this practicum asks you to do a few things. First, you need to calculate the correct measure of center and the correct measure of spread. Now note that the correct measure of center and measure of spread depend upon the shape of the distribution which means you'll first want to calculate or uh, create the appropriate univariate graphics. Now we've got a couple that we can work with. Um, box plot's pretty good, but it's kind of difficult to do in Excel. Histogram is fantastic for this. So I recommend the histogram as the univariate graphic. And by the way, it is univariate, meaning one variable is described. Um, so we got that. Then we're going to do the appropriate measure of correlation. Well, we've only got one. It's the R squared value, or I'm sorry, the R value. Um, and we're going to do it for correlation between this pair of numeric variables, correlations between pairs of numeric variables, because it looks at the relationship between them. And then we're going to create a bivariate graphic for that relationship. And that cr uh, bivariate graphic is going to be the scatter plot. That's the only option we've got for a bivariate graphic of these two variables. Um, so let's get started. Oh, I've got the data right here. So here's six variables in there. The first one is the day of the week. That's a categorical variable with seven levels, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Column B is the date. That's another categorical variable. This one's an interesting one because it also can be treated as numeric if you need to. Gross sales, that's going to be in dollars. That'll definitely be numeric. Net profit, also in dollars, also numeric. Customers and servers are counts. Customers is the number of customers served in that day, and the servers are the number of servers that served that day. So not too many servers, about 10, so small-scale operation. Um, but we're going to focus on these two variables for today, gross sales and net profit. And then we're going to focus on gross sales and customers. So let's get started on practicum number one. So the, for, for the first thing we're going to do, we're going to get a look at the distribution of gross sales. And that's going to be a histogram. And since we're, we're, we just need the shape of the histogram to get some information, we'll go ahead and use the default histogram in Excel. Note that if you want to clean up the default histogram, there is a video over on the OSU Supplements page that will show you how to do that. So I'm going to go into View, sorry, going into Data, Data Analysis and select histogram. Now the input range is the data. So that is going to be all of C. I'll just go ahead and highlight C. And bin range, I'm not going to specify a bin yet. I don't think I'll need to. Labels, cumulative, uh, not cumulative, chart output. That gives us the actual histogram. Without chart output, it just calculates all the bins. And OK. So here's the histogram. OK, that is an ugly histogram. So when we get to where we actually provide the, the graphic of choice, we're going to want to do something other than just the defaults here. But we get a good feel. This it looks definitely skewed to the positive side or right skewed. Since it's right skewed, the correct measure of center is the median. The correct measure of spread is the interquartile range. OK, so this is histogram for what variable was that? Gross sales. So I double click down there. Just going to say gross sales. Now let's take a look at the second variable, net profit. Again, histogram. And this is going to be for the Ds. And OK. Let's make that humongous. That also looks heavily skewed to the right, or positively skewed. Most of it's down here, but you've got that tail off to the right, so it's also skewed. So median for the measure of center, interquartile range for the measure of spread. So let's go ahead and, oops, this one was supposed to be net profit. Again, double click. So let's calculate the median and the interquartile range. Let's also make this a little bit bigger. Which 
means we make the bat smaller. So the median interquartile range. We've got a function for that. It's just median, M-E-D-I-A-N. And then we give it all the values. These aren't the values. These aren't the values. The values are back here on the raw data tab for gross sales. And I'm scrolling all the way down. Or I'm going to click on this and drag to the bottom. And hit enter now that everything's highlighted. The median is $2,165. The interquartile range, let's take a look at what got filled in there. Single quote, raw data, and single quote. That specifies the worksheet exclamation point then the range. And I'm going to actually copy that because I will need that in the future. That was an escape I just hit. Now the interquartile range, remember that's Q3 equals Q1. So I'm going to calculate Q3 here, Q1 there. Function is quartile. And you can either use .exc for exclusive, .inc for inclusive, or just the quartile. You give it the array, array. I just copied that from the median. And specify the quartile number. This is for quartile 3. I'll put a 3 in there. Boom. So the third quartile is $2,865. So in this entire data set, about three quarters of the times the restaurant made less than or equal to $2,865. First quartile is going to look an awful lot like the third. We're going to end it with a comma one instead of a comma three. So about a quarter of the time I made less than so the interquartile range is just the difference in that. It's Q3 minus Q1. IQR is $1,201. Cool. Let's do the same type of thing with net profit. Change everything around, make it bigger. You can still see the, the right skew there. So median. IQR, that's going to be Q3 and Q1 to the function that name is median. you got to give it the data. Again, I'll click down here in raw data. And we need this D column. Are we tired of waiting yet? We'll just highlight the entire D column. And enter. So the median net profit is $1,738. So about half the time I made less than that. About half the time I made more than that. The interquartile range again is Q3 minus Q1. I'm going to steal that range from the median. That was an escape again. This is quartile. And there's that range, and it's a third quartile, so comma three. Q A R T I L dot I N C of that range again, comma one. And the IQR is just equal to Q three minus Q one. So the inner quartile range is one thousand one hundred and sixty nine. Seventy five percent of the time, or thereabouts, I made two uh, the uh, net profit was two thousand four hundred and eleven dollars or less. 75% of the time, my net profit was $1,242 or more. I mean, that, that sounds better than saying $1,242 or less. So. so we got those done, the measure of center, measure of spread, and we had to do it based on the histogram. So that was the fun part. Well, this is statistics. It's learning about life. It's learning about our business. All of it is the fun part. Now let's go ahead and look at the correlation. Um, we can do the correlation on this page if we want, or I always like creating new pages. 
just so I can keep track of what's there. Um, just for those of us who don't remember, we need to find the correlation between gross sales, no, I'm sorry, gross sales and number of customers. So I create a new sheet, get that big enough for all of us. I'll call this one gross sales versus customers. So go to the raw data, gross sales, control C to copy that over, and then go back to the raw data, number of customers, control C to copy that over. So I do really do like to keep all of my analyses in separate worksheets. So correlation. Function for correlation in Excel is C O R R E L. And you just have to specify the two columns. I'm just going to specify both A and B column. And it's going to tell me, oh my goodness, I entered too few arguments. Oh, so I guess it was expecting A all by itself and B all by itself, not A and B together. So how do we fix that? I'm going to specify A, comma, B, and parenthesis. So the correlation between the two, technically the Pearson correlation, between these two numeric variables is 0 0.86316. That's a really high correlation. I mean, really high correlation. Correlations, remember, range from a negative one to a positive one. Zero indicates absolutely no relationship between the variables, technically no linear relationship. A negative one indicates a perfect negative relationship between the two. As one goes up, the other goes down. And a positive one indicates a perfect positive correlation between the two. As one goes up, so does the other. This one's 0.86. That's really high. It's kind of nice, though. OK, so I'm going to arrange things around here. I'm going to move the raw data there. Now we're good. And that's it. So we got the, the bivariate correlation here. See how quickly this is going? All we have to do is give Excel the, the formulas. Because if, if you remember the formula in the book in order to find the correlation, we'd have to find the mean, subtract off every single one of these gross sales values from that mean, and then multiply every one of those by the mean, uh, every customer value minus its mean, and then we divide by it's just a lot of work. Boom, that's all we have to do. So next is, ooh, the next are the graphics. And we'll try to do all the graphics in one shot. All right, now we've got to do the graphics. We're going to do a, a good histogram for gross sales, a good histogram for net profit. And we're going to do a really nice scatter plot for gross sales versus customers. So again, let's go to the gross sales tab. There's our histogram. I mean, one way it's not horrible. I'm going to delete that frequency, and I'm going to delete that. And yeah, it's not horrible. It's just these bins are kind of, shall we say, odd. I mean, why would I want to look at a bin that ends at 959.6363, etc.? I'd probably want to, it would make more sense to end that bin at 950 or something, something that's meaningful to me as a business owner. So I'm going to create bins that go all the way from, well, the minimum is 454. So I'll create the lowest bin at 450. And I got to go all the way up to 9555. That's, I'm going to call that one 10,000, and let's do it by 500s, I think. 500s going from, I'll make it from 0 to 10,000 in terms of 500s. Notice I'm making these choices based not on what the book says, because that's just a good recommendation, but on what the data should be telling me. Those bin widths, those bin sizes, those actual bins, are more meaningful to me as a businessman and as an analyst than the bins that are automatically generated. So I'm going to delete both of those. Boom. I'm going to get rid of this histogram, too. Boom. I'm going to keep our sample statistics over here. I'm going to create a bin. And these bins, I'm going to title it Gross Sales. Remember what I said. I was going to get these from 500. I'm sorry, going from 0 up to 10,000 in steps of 500. Boom. I think 
I got one more to do. Okay. So I've got those bins. And now I'm going to again activate the histogram. It's in data, data analysis, histogram. The input range, I'm going to specify the input range. Remember, we go back here, gross sales. The bin range is going to be that. Notice I did include gross sales in that swipe. Include the labels. I'm going to go ahead and create a new worksheet and OK. And there's the histogram that got created from my choice of bins. I'm going to get rid of those things. Now again, notice the interpretation that we needed for the first part was whether or not the data were skewed. We're still getting that interpretation. The strength of what we just did is now the histogram boundaries actually have some meaning for us. And some of you are going to say, why don't we get the histogram edges to be the same? OK. Click on one of the bars, right click. That's not what I want to do. I didn't click on the right thing. Got to click on something here. Oh, we'll go up here. Format design. Look at all these things we can do with the charts. I mean, this is awesome. Format. I mean, if we want to, yeah. Having trouble clicking the mouse. Okay, right click, format data series. Gap width, right now it's at 150%. Let's drop it to zero to see what happens. Ah, and now we've got our standard histogram. I don't like that color, so I'll go to fill. It's going to be a solid color. Whoops, no. It's clicking on the wrong thing. There we go. Right click. I'll just fill it with orange. I think orange is a good color. So there's our histogram. It's a really nice histogram for gross sales. Now, how do we do this for net profit. First let me change the name of this sheet to gross sales hist. Let's go to net profit. Uh, notice this net profit histogram that was default goes from $34, that was a really bad day, to again almost 10,000. So let's go ahead and keep the same bins. I'm going to get rid of this histogram. I'm going to delete those columns. Again, this is for net profit. I'm going to go from 0 to 10,000 and plus uh, in steps of 500. Do the histogram thing, data data analysis, histogram. Again, we're going to have to select our input range. Input range, go back to raw data, but it was for net profit. Then our bin range. is to 22. And we'll check everything else. And there's our histogram. not a bad histogram. Let's go ahead and make it a little bit, let's make the sheet a little bit bigger. Again, it t still tells us that it's, that the data are skewed to the right. Going to get rid of the gap width. We're going to change the color. That's a nice color. Okay, no it's not. Still tells us it's skewed to the right, but the strength again is that these bins have meaning for us as opposed to those default bins that we had to deal with. And let's go ahead, while we're at it, we'll go ahead and do the scatter plot. This is done differently. This goes into insert, 
charts. That's going to be that one. But usually, or almost always before I do that, I'm going to highlight the data, because then it's by default it'll show us the scatter plot. And we've got some options on this, but one thing that's important is to add the um, axis titles for the horizontal and for the vertical. Horizontal runs from 0 to 12,000. So that tells me that this will be the gross sales. The axis title for the vertical goes from 0 to 1,000. So that tells me customers. Also, Y variable will be along the top. Also, the first column will be the X. The second column will be the Y. Now notice something here. I'm going to add one more chart element. It's going to be the trend line. It's going to be a linear trend line. I am going to alter that a little bit. Can I do it over here? I can. Display the equation on the chart. More importantly, display the R squared value on the chart. Here's the equation. This equation says for every increase of one in gross sales, the number of customers went up by 0 0.0568. Well, that's weird. That doesn't really make sense. Since it's customers that drives the gross sales, customers should be on the, uh, should be on the x-axis, the independent variable. And let's go ahead and fix that pretty soon. Let's also look at our squared value, 0 0.745. This is equal to the correlation to the power of 2. That r squared value is just the correlation squared. OK, let's fix this. And there's probably an easy way in Excel to do it. I don't know what that easy way is. So I'm just going to start over from scratch. Again, insert, scatter plot. Okay, this looks better. This is kind of interesting. You got most of my days were down in this area, but I got some that were here. Then I had a humongous day way out here. I wonder that must have been bedlam for one of those years. Um, so again, we're going to add the titles. We'll change those briefly, or you know how to change those. I'm going to add the trend line. I'm going to get rid I'm going to modify the trend line to display the equation and the r squared value and note the r squared value didn't change. That's always going to be the case because that r squared value is the square of the correlation and the correlation is between two variables. It doesn't matter which order you give it in. Now the interpretation of the line of best fit is different. So remember Horizontal is now number of customers. Vertical is gross sales. So for every additional customer, as customer increases by 1, as the x increases by 1, my gross sales increase by an average of $13.127. On average, for every customer I get, my gross sales is about $13. So that line's going to become kind of important later on in the course. But you're starting to see, wow, that, that's important information that me, that I, as a business owner, can, can, can use. And I can also break this up into different groups or different restaurants. So we're dealing with my lamplighter restaurant now, but we could also compare it to my steak Jupiter restaurant and compare the slopes there and the R-squared values. But that's beyond the scope of this pr practicum. Let's just end it right here. And so here's what we've accomplished in this practicum. Let's go back to the raw data. We've learned a little bit on how to handle our, our uh, 
worksheets and our variables. So that's basically one thing. We looked at our gross sales. In order to determine the best measure of center and of spread, we had to look at the histogram. Histogram was skewed, therefore median and interquartile range are the appropriate measure of center and measure of spread. We looked at the net profit. Again, we first had to look at the histogram. Again, highly skewed. Therefore, the median and the interquartile range are the appropriate measure of center and of spread. We then looked at the correlation between two variables. The correlation was 0 0.86316, which is very high. Not perfect, but very high. We got a, a really nice scatter plot. And we talked a little bit about the difference between the independent and the dependent variable. Here, the number of customers is the independent variable because that affects the gross sales. And then we interpreted this line of best fit. The slope of 13.127 is how much the y variable increases for every one increase in the x variable. And then again, looking at this graphic, it tells us a little something. I mean, I've got most of my days are way down here. I've got some really good days here. Oops. I've got some really good days here. Those are probably home football games. And then that must be home bedlam way up there where I made, had a whole lot of customers. Now notice that this and this group tend to follow the same rule. But when I had almost a thousand customers that day for probably bedlam 2000, whichever bedlam that was, that was in Stillwater, it was a long ways from what we expected. We would have expected gross sales way up here, but it was it was about $4,000 less than we would expect. Which makes me think that maybe, just maybe, a linear model here won't work. But then that's just one variable, uh, one data point, so we don't know. And that's practicum activity number one. So you put all that into a nice little Word document, submit it to me, and then you save this Excel document. Let's go ahead and save this. I'm going to save this as practicum1, and I'm going to upload that also to uh, D2L, the D2L folder. And that's it for practicum number one. Hopefully this was helpful. Take care of yourselves.